the week I was working to a superb crowd. I got the greatest accolade a comedian could ever have. This fellow in the audience, he actually pissed himself. And it's the first time I've worked in old folks' home. We'll do it again. <laughs> this woman's getting married. And she meets a friend in the street. She said, how are you doing? She said, I can't believe it. I'm getting married again on Saturday for the fourth time and I'm still a virgin. She says, you never. She said, I am. Don't you remember my first husband? He was a gynaecologist and he just liked to study it, you know. And uh, my second husband, now he was a, a philosopher and he liked to talk about it. Now, my third husband, he was a stamp collector. Who I do miss him. He said, uh... <laughs> when you have a really bad night as a comic, the abuse is frightening. I mean, audiences never give abuse to singers, you know. Big stars never get heckled, just comics. Can you remember Pavarotti in Hyde Park? He stood there and he said, I shall now sing from the World of Cup, Nessum Adorma. Eh? Nobody shouted out, We've heard it, you fat pig, get off, go on. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> so you can imagine my shock and horror, girls, when he come in our house the other week with the Karma Sutra. Have you seen that, that dirty boot with all them funny positions? He said to me, Hey, get on all fours. I said, You are. He said, Get on all fours. I said, Piss off. <laughs> he said, Where's your sense of adventure? I said, It's running down my bloody legs. <laughs> he said, Come on, don't be mean. Join in. Get on all fours. So there I am, middle of our bedroom floor. That hard faced bastard stood on my back and changed the bloody light bulb. <laughs> So this Darby and Joan club from Yorkshire, right, they decide to come Christmas shopping in London, these Darby and Joaners, and they go around Soho, and this old girl, she's 80, and they go in a sex shop, and she decides to buy something. She said, I'm going to try and get that silly old sod going when I get back to Yorkshire. He's 80 as well. So she buys a pair of crotchless knickers, right, <laughs> and she gets back home to Yorkshire, and she puts these crotchless knickers on, and she goes in the bedroom, she says to her husband, here, do you want some of this? He said, I don't. Look what it's done to your knickers. <laughs> Talking to us. I'm a married woman, I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not very happy about it. Every time we make love, I close my eyes. Can't stand to see the bastard enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be here. My mother would die if she knew I was here. She thinks I'm a nurse, because I used to be. I was on the women's ward on the breakfast trolley, right? Loved it. Pushing that trolley, happy as Larry. One day, some soft cow at the back shouted, Excuse me, can I have a Tampax? I said, Piss off, you'll have a Weetabix like everybody else. <laughs> They moved me to men's surgical. <laughs> I bloody loved it there. Girls, you'd be surprised all the different sizes and shapes of thingies you can get. I know I was on the bottle. <laughs> Some of them used to slide in that bottle dead easy. Others you really had to force. <laughs> Funny, really, because the harder you force, the worse it was to get the bottle off when they'd finished. <laughs> Smash three, but I got their phone number, I'm not a dickhead. And, and Tampax used to be one size, fits all, end of stuff, not anymore, there's millions of them. The largest of which is Tampax Super Plus. The most absorbent tampon in the world, it says on the box. So last year on holiday, I thought I'll try them. I dived into a swimming pool. The whole pool, whoosh, gone. <laughs> it's every year this country. Bring something new for us to worry about, don't they? Last year it was E. coli, year before, BSE. But the big worry was one that started out in mid to late 80s. AIDS! Don't die of ignorance. Well, I tell you, when it first came out, I weren't too sure what AIDS was all about. Were you sure what AIDS was? I thought it got like something to do with like initials, RH. Because he died first, didn't he? Rock Hudson. Then there was that ballad answer, wasn't there? Sir Robert Heltman. He went next, went he? Russell Harty. Do you know about Rolf Harris? He shit himself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Rolf Harris giving another fellow one from behind? Can you imagine like that? <laughs> Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> I tell you, he's, he's a bastard, that animal hospital, isn't he, Rolf? He's in the one there. He's a right get. You see him last week, he went. <laughs> Bim, 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 bim. Sorry, Gladys, we've got to put your dog down. <laughs> Just broke down this aeroplane, right? All the systems have gone down. There's nothing working except the strip lights and the tannoy. And the captain comes on the intercom and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a severe problem with the plane. He said, uh, I'm going to have to ditch it in the scene in about 45 minutes' time. 
We'll have to take the emergency procedure. You'll have to put your head between your legs. I thought, if I could do that, I'd never go out of the house. <laughs> he said, please don't panic. He said, I'll be back with 10 minutes to go before splashdown, and clicked off. And this woman jumped up in the center aisle, and she tore her dress off, and she tore her underwear off. She said, come on, somebody, make me feel like a real woman. And this Yorkshire man stood up and he took his shirt off. He said, here, iron that. <laughs> You young men today won't wear condoms because they don't think they're macho enough. Well, I've got the solution. Let's write Reebok on the side of them. <laughs> Charge £180 for three and you're on to a winner, aren't you? <laughs> but I love football. I mean, this year, World Cup, I'm getting excited. Because I love, last time I was really excited, it was Euro 96. We had football all year round. But something strange happened to me. I was watching the England-Scotland game Saturday afternoon and the phone rang. I picked it up, this woman's husky voice said, is that uh, Gary Marshall? I said, it is. She said, do you know, I've always wanted to listen to your voice whilst masturbating. I said, that's amazing. How do you know I was masturbating? <laughs> <laughs> Little advice I've got to give the lads in here if I can. I, I'm on a thing at the moment called the male pill. Get on it. It stops all those unwanted pregnancies. What you do, you take it the morning after a bit of jiggy jiggy. And it changes your blood group. 